The difference between stepping stones and stumbling blocks is how we use them. The fact that we are here once again on a virtual platform to present our elocution competition proves that no matter what falls on us, we have cleared the road and moved ahead. On behalf of St. Thomas's Boys School Kidapo, I welcome you to our elocution competition, the Excalibur 2021-22. Under normal circumstances, this program would be held in our school concert hall amid the loud cheering and applause of our students. Of course, we do miss their smiling faces. But on a positive note, the new technology has taken us to a broader stage with a wider audience. Before we begin, let us invoke God's blessings in our lives. I now request Mr. Somnath Chauhan to lead us in prayer. Let's pray. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, and it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. besides being an excellent administrator. She has published papers in national and international conferences. She has also published her debut book, God's Invisible Past. Welcome, ma'am. We are pleased to have you with us. Our participants will be greatly encouraged by your presence. Our next judge, Mrs. K. Chatterjee is no stranger to St. Thomas's Boys School Kidapo. She was a pillar of the English department. She held elocution competition, quiz, debate, and spelling competition, Spellomania. The legendary sword, the Excalibur of King Arthur, had enkindled in her a desire to bring our voice into constructive thinking. Under this banner, she wanted to make communication skill 
a vocal art. Shakespeare revisited a play written by her and enacted by a voice was a huge success. Welcome you ma'am. We are glad that you are a part of Excalibur once again. The part of St. Thomas's family, our very own Mr. Sylvester de Costa. He has been a torchbearer for many events held in our school, like public speaking competition, elocution competition, quiz and spelling competition. He has been teaching English at the ICSC and ISC level at St. Paul's Boarding and Day School and St. Thomas's Boys School Kinpo for 33 years. He has been in the panel of examiners in English literature as a team leader for several years and he has been a judge for various competitions held at St. Xavier's College, La Martinia and Julian Day School. I was honored to be a judge for one of the events organized by him in 2015 under the banner of the Excalibur Club. The roles are reversed now, sir. We are glad to have you with us. Welcome, sir. A very good morning to everyone. Today we have a long list of boys who would be performing for the elocution contest. The names are as follows. Afan bin Afshraf, Yasha, Piyush Kumar and Ritanshuk Roy from 8B. Vikramjit Paul and Mohammad Atif Khan from 8C. Ayush Chatterjee from 8D. Aranya Biswas, Nilab Josain Gupta, Arunag Murmu, Kiryagish Pine and Rajini Chatterjee from 9A. We have Soham Mukherjee, Soham Shaha, Rajashi Singh, Kanishak Kumar Giri, Ayan Mukit Rahman, Saksham Singh, Niyamul Haq and Nilanjan Sinha from 9B. We have Ishan Singh from 10A and Anj Tiwari and Rehan Ali from 10B. Now we will be watching the performance of the boys. Thank you. Shoot. Jabberwocky by Louis Carroll. Twas brillig and the slithy toes did gyre and gimble in the wave. All mimsy were the borogoves and the mome rats outgrabe. Beware the Jabberwock, my son, the jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the jub jub bird, and shun the frumious bandersnatch. He took his vorpal sword in hand, long time the maxim foe he sought. So rested he by the tum tum tree, and stood a while in thought. And as in uffish thought he stood, the jabberwock, with eyes of flame, came whiffling through the tulgey wood, and burbled as it came. One, two, one, two, and through and through, the vorpal blade went snicker snack. He left it dead, and with its head he went galumphing back. And has thou slain the jabberwock? Come to my arms, my beamish boy. What oh, fractious day, Kalu Kale! He chortled in his joy. Twas brillig, and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wave. All mimsy were the borogoves, and the mome rats outgave. Thank you. Hello everyone, I am Rajdeep Chatterjee of class 9A and today I will be reciting the speech by John of Gaunt from Richard II, Act 2, Scene 1, written by William Shakespeare. Methinks I am a prophet, new inspired, and thus expiring do foretell of him. 
His rash, fierce blaze of riot cannot last, for violent fires soon burn out themselves. Small showers last long, but sudden storms are shot. He tires betimes that spurs too fast betimes. With eager feeding food, don't choke the feeder. Light vanity, insatiate commodant, consuming means, soon preys upon itself. This royal throne of kings, this sceptered eye, this earth of majesty, this seat of Mars, this other Eden, demi-paradise, this fortress built by nature for herself, against infection and the hand of war, this happy breed of men, this little world, this precious stone set in the silver sea, which serves it in the office of a wall, or as a moat defensive to a house against the envy of less happier lands. This blessed plot, this earth, this realm, this England, this nurse, this teeming womb of royal kings, feared by their breed and famous by their birth, renowned for their deeds as far from home, for Christian service and true chivalry, as in the sepulchre in stubborn jury of the world's ransom, blessed Mary's son. This land of such dear souls, this dear, dear land, dear for her reputation through the world, is now leased out, I die pronouncing it, like to a tenement or a pelting farm. England, bound in with a triumphant sea, whose rocky shore beats back the envious siege of watery Neptune, is now bound in with shame, with inky blots and rotten parchment bonds. That England, that was wont to conquer others, hath made a shameful conquest of itself. Ah! Oh. With a scandal vanish with my life. How happy then for my ensuing death. Thank you. Hello everyone. I am Nilabja Sen Gupta from class 9A. And today I will be reciting the poem I am the people, the monk by Carl Sandburg. I am the people, the mob, the crowd, the mass. Do you know that all the great work of the world is done through me? I am the working man, the inventor, the maker of the world's foods and clothes. I am the audience that witnesses history. The Napoleons come from me and the Lincolns. They die. And I send forth more Napoleons and Lincolns. I am the seed ground. I am the prairie that will stand for much ploughing terrible storms pass over me. I forget. The best of me is sucked out and wasted and I forget. Everything but death comes to me and makes me work and give up what I have but I forget. Sometimes I growl, shake myself and spatter a few red drops for history to remember and then I forget. When I, the people, learn to remember, when I, the people, use the lessons of tomorrow and no longer forget who robbed me last year, who played me for a fool, then there will be no speaker in the world say the name the people, with any fleck of sneer in his voice or any far of derision in his smile, the mob, the crowd, the mass will arrive then. Thank you. Hello everyone, I am Anurag Burmu of class 9A and I will be reciting Mark Antony's speech from Julius Caesar. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do lives after them. The good is oft interred with their bones, so let it be with Caesar. The noble Brutus had told you, Caesar was ambitious. If it were so, it was a grievous fault, and grievously had Caesar answered it. Here, under leave of Brutus, 
and the rest for brutus is an honorable man so are they all all honorable men come mind to speak in caesar's funeral he was my friend faithful and just to me but brutus says he was ambitious and brutus is an honorable man he had brought many captives home to rome whose ransom did the general coffer fill did this in caesar seem ambitious when that the poor have cried caesar had wept ambition should be made of stunners of yet brutus says he was ambitious and brutus is an honorable man you all did see on the lupercal i thrice presented him a kingly crown which he did thrice refuse was this ambition yet brutus says he was ambitious and sure he is an honorable man i speak not to disprove what brutus spoke what here i am to speak what i do know you all did love him once not without the cause what cause withholds you then to mourn for him o oh, judgment the art fled to brutus beast and men have lost their reasons bear with me my heart is in the coffin there with caesar and i must pause till it come back to me thank you hello everyone i am aranya biswas from class 9a and i am going to recite abraham lincoln's letter to his son's teacher he will have to learn i know that all men are not just all men are not true but teach him also that for every scoundrel there is a hero that for every selfish politician there is a dedicated leader teach him that for every enemy there is a friend it will take time i know but teach him if you can that a dollar earned has far more value than five pound teach him to learn to lose and also to enjoy winning steer him away from envy if you can teach him the secret of quiet laughter let him know early that the bullies are the easiest to lick teach him if you can the wonder of books but also give him quiet time to ponder the eternal mystery of birds in the sky and bees in the sun and flowers on a green hillside in school teach him it is far more honorable to fail than to cheat teach him to have faith in his own ideas even if everyone tells him they are wrong teach him to be gentle with gentle people and to be tough with the tough try to give my son the strength not to follow the crowd when everyone else is getting on the bandwagon teach him to listen to all men but teach him also to filter all he hears on the screen of truth and to take only the good that comes through teach him if you can how to laugh when he is sad teach him there is no shame in tears teach him to scoff at cynics and to be aware of too much sweetness teach him to sell his brain to the highest bidders but never to put a price tag on his heart and soul teach him to close his ears to a howling mob and to stand and fight if he thinks he is right treat him gently but do not cuddle him because only the test of fire makes fine steel let him have the courage to be impatient let him have the patience to be brave teach him always to have sublime faith in himself because then he will always have sublime faith in mankind 
This is a big order, but see what you can do. He is such a fine little fellow. My son, thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Ansh Tiwari and I am from class 10B. Today I shall be speaking about the famous speech delivered by Jawaharlal Nehru. Nehru had always been one of those leaders who influenced the masses with his speeches. The Trist with Destiny speech was delivered by Nehru on the eve of India's independence towards midnight on 14th of August 1947 and it spoke about the 100 year struggle against the British Empire in India long years ago we made a tryst with destiny and now the time comes when we shall redeem our pledge not wholly or in full measure but very substantially at the stroke of midnight when the world sleeps india will awake to life and freedom a moment comes when we step out of old to new when an age ends and when a soul of nation long suppressed finds utterance it is fitting that at this solemn moment we take the pledge of dedication to the service of india and her people to the still larger cause of humanity thank you hello everyone i am kanish kumar giri of class 9b and today i will be reciting the gettysburg address of abraham lincoln four scores and seven years ago our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal now we are engaged in a great civil war testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure we are met on a great battlefield of that war we have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who gave their lives so that the nation might live it is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this but in larger sense we cannot dedicate we cannot consecrate we cannot hallow this ground the brave men living and dead who struggled here have far consecrated it far from a poor power to add or detract the world will little note nor remember what we say here but will never forget what they did here it is for us rather living to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they fought here have thus far so nobly advanced it is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause that these dead shall have not died in vain that this nation under god shall have a new birth of freedom and the government of the people by the people for the people shall not perish from the earth thank you good morning everyone i am saksham singh of class 9b today i am going to recite the speech delivered by swami vivekananda on september 11th 1893 at the first world's parliament of religions sisters and brothers of america it fills my heart with joy unspeakable to rise in response to the warm and cordial welcome which you have given us I thank you in the name of the most ancient order of monks in the world. I thank you in the name of the mother of religions and I thank you in the name of millions and millions of Hindu people of all classes and sects. My thanks also to some of the speakers on this platform who referring to the delegates from the orient have told you that these men from far off nations may well claim the honor of bearing to different lands the idea of toleration 
I am proud to belong to a religion which has taught the world both tolerance and universal acceptance. We believe not only universal toleration but we accept all religions as true. I am proud to belong to a nation which has sheltered the persecuted and the refugees of all religions and all nations of the earth. I am proud to tell you that we have gathered in our bosom the purest remnant of the Israelites who came to southern India and took refuge with us in the very year in which their holy temple was shattered to pieces by Roman tyranny. I will quote to you, brethren, a few lines from a hymn which I remember to have repeated from my earliest boyhood, which is every day repeated by millions of human beings. As the different streams having their sources in different paths, which men take through different tendencies, various though they appear, crooked or straight, all lead to thee. The present convention, which is one of the most august assemblies ever held, is in itself a vindication, a declaration to the world of the wonderful doctrine preached in the Gita. Whosoever comes to me, through whatsoever form, I reach him. All men are struggling through paths which in the end lead to me. Sectarianism, bigotry and its horrible descendant, fanaticism have long possessed this beautiful earth. They have filled the earth with violence, drenched it often and often with human blood, destroyed civilization and sent the whole nations to despair. Had it not been for these horrible demons, human society would be far more advanced than it is now. But their time is come and I fervently hope that the bell that tolled this morning in honour of this convention may be the death knell of all fanaticism of all persecutions with the sword or with the pen and of all uncharitable feelings between persons wending their way to the same goal. Thank you. Good day, respected principal, vice principal, teachers and my dear friends. Hi, Ishan Singh of St. Thomas Boys School, class 10A, hereby present to you a ballad named The Itch Cape Rock by Robert Saudi. No stir in the sea. The ship was still as she could be. Her sails from the heaven received no motion. Her keel was steady in the ocean. Without either sign or sound of their shock, the waves flowed over the inch cape rock. So little they rose, so little they fell. They did not move the inch cape bell. The abbot of Aberbrothock had placed the bell on the inch cape rock. On a boy in the storm, it floated and swung and over the waves its morning rung when the rock was hid by the surges swell the mariners heard the warning bell and then they knew the perilous lock and blessed the abbot of Abelbethauk the sun in the heaven was shining gay all things were joyful on that day. The seabirds screamed as they wheeled round, and there was joy in their sound. The boy of the Inchgate Bell was seen, a darker speck on the ocean green. So Ralph the rover walked his deck and fixed his eye on the darker speck. He felt the cheering power of spring. It made him whistle. It made him sing. 
His heart was mirthful to excess. But the rover's mirth was wickedness. His eye was on the inch cave float. Quoth he, My men, put out the boat, have his big, the abbot of Aberbrothok. The boat is lowered. The boatmen row. And to the inch cave rock they go. Sir so Ralph bent over from the boat and he cut the bell from the inch cave float. Down sang the bell with a gurgling sound. The bubbles rose and burst around. Quote Sir Ralph, the next who comes to the rock won't bless the abbot of Aberbrothok. So Ralph the rover sailed away. He scoured the seas for many a day. And now he grown rich with plundered store and steals his score for Scotland's show. So thick a haze overspreads the sky they cannot see the sun on high the wind had blown a gale all day at evening it had died away on the deck the rover takes his stand so dark it is they see no land Poor Sir Ralph, it will be light as soon, for there is the dawn of the rising moon. Canst hear, said one, the breakers row, for methinks we should be near the show. Now, where we are, I cannot tell, but I wish we could. Hear the inch cave bell. They hear no sound. The swell is strong. Though the wind had fallen, they drift along. Till the vessel strikes with a shivering shock. Oh Christ, if the inch cave rock. Surround the rover, tore his hair. He cursed himself in his despair. The waves rushing on every side. The ship is sinking. Thus, in his despair. The waves rushing on every side. The ship is sinking beneath the tide. But even in the dying fear, one dreadful sound could the rover hear a sound as if with the inch cave bell the devil below was ringing his knell thank you good morning principal sir vice principal sir teachers and friends i am afan bin ashraf of class 8b and today i am going to recite the poem daffodils by william wordsworth I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills when all at once I saw a crowd a host of golden daffodils beside the lake beneath the trees fluttering and dancing in the breeze continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the milky way they stretched in a winding line along the margin of the bay then thousands saw at a glance tossing their heads in sprightly dance the waves beside them danced, but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee. The poet could not be but gay in such a joking company. I gazed and gazed and the, but little thought what wealth they show to me had brought. For oft when on my couch I lie, in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude. And then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. Thank you. Hello everyone. 
My name is Vikram Jitpal from class 8C of St. Thomas Boys School. Today I am going to recite a beautiful poem known as Slow Dance, written by David L. Weatherford. Have you ever watched kids on a merry-go-round? Or listened to rain slapping the ground? Ever followed a butterfly's erratic flight? Or gaze at the sun fading into the night? You better slow down. Don't dance so fast. Time is short, the music won't last. Do you run through each day on the fly? When you ask, how are you? Do you hear the reply? When the day is done, do you lie in your bed with the next hundred chores running through your head? You better slow down. Don't dance so fast. Time is short, the music won't last. Ever told your child, we'll do it tomorrow and in your haste, not see his sorrow. Ever lost touch? Let a friendship die. Cause you never had time to call and say hi. You better slow down. Don't dance so fast. Time is short. The music won't last. When you run so fast to get somewhere, you miss half the fun of getting there. When you worry and hurry through your day, it's like an unopened gift thrown away. Life isn't a race, so take it slower. Hear the music before your song is over. Thank you. Charge of the Light Brigade by Lord Tennyson Half a league, half a league, half a league onward. All in the valley of death rode the 600. Forward the Light Brigade! Charge for the guns, he said. Into the valley of death rode the 600. Forward the light brigade! Was there a man dismayed? Not the soldier knew. Someone had blundered. There's not to make reply. There's not to reason why. There's but to do and die. Into the valley of death rode the 600. Cannon to right of them. Cannon to left of them, cannon in front of them, volleyed and thundered, stormed at with shot and shell. Boldly they rode and well into the jaws of death, into the mouth of hell, rode the six hundred. Flashed all the sabres bare, flashed as they turned in air, savouring the gunners there, charging an army, while all the world wondered. Plunged in the battery smoke, right through the line they broke. Cossack and Russian reeled from the saber stroke, shattered and sundered. Then they rode back, but not, not the six hundred. Cannon to right of them, cannon to left of them, cannon behind them, volleyed and thundered, stormed at with shot and shell, while horse and hero fell. There they had fought so well, came through the jaws of death, back from the mouth of hell. All that was left of them, left of six hundred. When can their glory fade? Oh, the wild charge they made. All the world wondered. Honoured the charge they made. Honoured the light brigade. Noble six hundred. Thank you. Hello everyone, I am Soha Mukherjee and today I am going to recite a poem written by William Blake, D. Tiger. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night. What immortal hand or eye could frame the fearful symmetry? In what distant deeps or skies burn the fire of thine eyes? On what wings dare we aspire? What the hands dare cease the fire? And what shoulder and what art could twist the sinews of the heart? And when the heart began to beat, what read hand and what read feet? What the hammer, what the chain, in what foreigners was thy brain? What the anvil, what read grasp, dare in deadly terrors clasp? When stars threw down their spears, and what at heaven with their tears? Did he smile his work to see? Did he who make the lamp make thee? Tiger, tiger, burning bright 
in the forests of the night? What immortal hand or right dare frame the fearful symmetry? Thank you. Hello everyone, I am Rajoshi Singh of Plus 9B and today I am going to recite a poem, The Listeners by Walter Delamere. Is there anybody there? said the traveler, knocking on the moly door, and his horse in the silence stamped the grasses of the forest ferny floor, and the bird flew up out of the turret uh, above the traveler's head, and he smut upon the door again a second time. Is there anybody there? he said. <clears throat> but no one descended to the traveler. No head from the leaf print seal leaned over and looked into his grey eyes, where he stood perplexed and still. But only a host of phantom listeners, the dwell in the lone house then, stood listening in the quiet of the moonlight. To so that voice from the world of men, stood thronging the faint moonbeams on the dark stair that goes down to the empty hall, hearkening in an air state and shaken by the lonely traveller's call, and he felt in his heart the strangeness, the stillness answering his cry, while his horse moved cropping the dark turf, neath the starred and leafy sky, for he suddenly smote on the door even louder and lifted his head, tell them I came, and no one answered, that I kept my word, he said, never the least stir made the listeners, through every word he spake, fell echoing to the shadowing of the still house. From the one man left awake, hey, the herd is foot upon stirrup, and the sound of iron on stone, and how the silence stirred softly backward when the plunging hooves were gone. Thank you everyone. Everyone, I am Shoham Shah of class 9B, and today I am going to recite the poem, The Heart of the Tree, written by Henry Color Bunner. What does he plant who plants a tree? He plants a frame of the sun and sky. He plants a flag of breeze free, the shaft of beauty towering high. He plants a home to heaven and I, for song and mother croon of bird, in hushed and happy twilight heard. The treble of heaven's harmony, this thing he plants who plants a tree. What does he plant who plants a tree? He plants cool shade and tender rain. And seed and bird of dish to be, and years that fade and flush again. He plants the glory of the plain, he plants the forest's heritage, the harvest of a coming age, the joy that unborn eyes shall see. This thing he plants who plants a tree. What does he plant who plants a tree? He plants in sap and leaf and wood. In love of home and loyalty, and far cast thought of civic good, his blessings for the neighborhood, who, in the hollow of his hand, holds all the growth of all our land, a nation's growth from sea to sea, stirs in his heart, who plants a tree. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, respected principal sir, teachers, and my loving children. It's my esteemed honor to judge this elocution competition. Thank you, Principal Sir, for inviting me as a judge. Dear children, you might have heard this saying, if you speak, you can influence, and if you influence, you can change lives. In my opinion, each one of you is a winner because you tried and gave it your best. Children, poise and good deportment can be cultivated and I am amazed by the way some of you have mastered this art. It was brilliant. You delivered your topics in an amazing manner. Congratulations to all the winners, though it was very difficult to select a winner. Congratulations once again, children. God bless you all. Good morning, St. Thomas's Boys School. Teachers, students, principal, vice principal. A special good morning to you. After a gap of about eight years, I'm here to speak before you just a few words after 
having listened to all the 15 participants, I feel honored and privileged that I have been given an opportunity to judge their speeches and pieces. Now, I would like to say that all the boys have been really good. After two years of pandemic, it's not very easy to once again get involved in all these school co-curricular activities. But I would take a special, make a special note on how enthusiastic our boys are today, just as they had been years ago when I used to be a part of this institution. Some of the boys have been particularly good and impressive in their choice of the texts that they have selected to elocute upon. A special mention of the boy who had chosen a limeric poem, a nonsensical poem by Louis Carroll, which is quite tough to recite, but he has done a very good job. The joy, the fun content of the poem has been very well executed. Another boy who has selected a piece from Richard II, Earl of Gaunt's dying speech, he, he too has done a marvelous job. And after all this, I want to say that all of you who have taken this initiative to try your uh, uh, elocution skills, you have a long way to go and you have rooms to improve, which you will under the able guidance of your wonderful teachers. I had retired after a 35 plus number of years of service in the English department in 2013 and since then I have realized that how much I have missed you all. This school, St. Thomas's Boys School, has always been a part of my life. And now I must say that I consider I have been a part of this institution all my life. Love you boys, love you teachers, Wish you all the very best for all times to come. Keep shining. And just one last word I would like to say to the boys. Be proud of St. Thomas's and your colors are blue. Let us be proud of you and your colors. Keep Soaring high, all the best. God bless you all. Thank you. Hello, my young friends. I feel honored to be asked to be a judge of this online elocution contest, the first of its kind I have ever come across. I still remember the last event that I organized 
in St. Thomas' School. It was in 2018, in the month of August, it was a public speaking contest for class 11 and 12. And in the month of November, it was the Spell B contest, again for class 11 and 12, under the Excalibur Club. And I feel very happy that your Miss, Miss Rosie, is continuing the good work of keeping up the tradition of the Excalibur Club. Thank you, Miss, for proceeding with the work that we have set years back. Well, as far the elocution contest is concerned, overall performance was good. It was really a commendable performance. The fact that you participated in it, the fact that you learnt by heart those po prose piece or the poetry and you spoke in front of the camera, you made all that arrangement, though it was not in the school hall in front of a big audience and you spoke in the camera, in front of the camera which replaced the august presence of the audience shows your diligence, your sense of duty and your call for any event organized in the school. Good, keep it up and I must thank your teachers for organizing this online event and you coming forward to participate in it. The 15 of you have shown extraordinary courage in coming up and presenting the matter before the camera and then sending it to your teachers. And after all, it was a rich experience, I told you. First time I have judged an online event. I have done many such events as a judge. I was called even in St. Xavier's College by some of my students to judge certain events for their Zab Utsab. But this was something different. Well, I found certain flashes of brilliance in the performance of Aranya Biswas. You have another Tiryagish Pine. You have Rajdeep Chatterjee. And the others online, Nilabjo Sen Gupta. There was also Another performance, Anurag, you have Shaksham, they have done a commendable performance. Their expression was rather good. Voice modulation was matching to the occasion and the feeling and emotion which was needed for that particular situation was brought out very well. So once again, I congratulate all of you. Not that the others have not done well, but you know, you have to select a few for our comments and our assessment. And that is the reason I feel all of you are a winner, but there is always room for improvement. One thing is, you must feel the part. Once you have understood the meaning of the passage, you should be able to bring out that meaning and you should be able to identify yourself with that character in that prose piece or is it a public speech 
delivered by somebody, Abraham Lincoln or Swami Vivekananda or whatever it be. You must identify yourself with that character. And once you are able to do that and you understand the meaning of the passage, emotion, feelings automatically flow. After all, poetry is the language of the heart. So you will be able to pour out your heart. All your passions and emotions will come out openly. Moreover, for class 9 and 10, not that that is the only system, a public speech will be a better choice. But I find that Tiryagish Pine, having chosen a poetry, which is the language of the heart, he has done a wonderful job. He has disproved me that it is not necessary that some speech has to be chosen for elocuting. He has done a very good job with that poetry. Good. Tiryagesh Pine, keep it up. I am sure you will become a good public speaker in future. Who knows, you may also become a political leader. Anyway, I don't dishearten anybody and I am sure that is only a constructive criticism. Another thing you must remember is that the most important thing in elocution is articulation. I would rather explain what articulation is with a comparison. Articulation is the courtesy of an actor as punctuality is the virtue of a king. You know punctuality is a great, is a matter of great importance to a king and therefore if you want to become successful as an actor it depends how you make every sound in every word distinctly audible that is what articulation is you cannot keep your hearers guessing at words not properly pronounced or articulated and thus you force the hearers in making up the meaning from the context from the context of the sentence of course and what happens is the listener lose interest in hearing you and the purpose is defeated therefore articulation is very important make sure that you pronounce every syllable to the last syllable you must utter properly that there is no question of not paying attention you must have that audience rapport you call it that eye contact to arouse interest in your hearers and not let them go to sleep when you are elocuting so keep that in mind and language is for the ear and not for the eye and in order to acquire the art of good speaking you have to open your mouth well use the lip and the tip of your tongues energetically that's what is important that a certain amount of air must flow out of your mouth when you are pronouncing words. Over the years I have seen that students are not able to differentiate the sound B and V, bat and victory. What happens is when you pronounce the letter V, cut your lower lip, victory, value. Make sure that you consciously cut your lower lip whenever you have with the V sound 
in a particular word. Make sure you do that. Practice that and you will be a good speaker. You will be able to make the distinction, especially the word love and not love. Ultimately, you will find the word turning out to be love and not love. So be careful about that. And uh, you must not speak in a take it or leave it voice. Whether the person hears it or does not hear it should not be your style of speaking. You must speak definitely to something. Uh, that is what is important. Often you'll find uh, people gifted with rich voice but they have a tendency to eat up the words and this is a drawback. So for keeping that in mind, I am sure in future you will be able to be good speaker and uh, in India you will find there are various accents of English. In South India or in Punjab or in Bengal they have their variations. They are as divergent as the regions. We have so many regions and these accents, local accents are always there. But that is not a problem. It does not matter. As long as you have the clarity of voice, make sure your words are pronounced with a clarity. With that, I once again thank you. Thank your teacher for making me a part of this elocution contest. And I am sure you will do better because there is always room for improvement, young guys. You are budding youths, the future of India. And a lot depends on your shoulder. And speaking properly will take you a long way. If you are able to communicate properly, there's nothing like it. And a lot of success depends on your ability to communicate properly. Thank you once again. Good day and good luck. They say thank you is the best prayer that anyone could say. Thank you expresses extreme gratitude, humility and understanding. I would like to first of all thank our principal, Mr. John A.K. Ghosh, for his continuous support. Next, I would like to thank our vice principal, Mr. Lincoln Druart, for his kind words and his encouragement. Next, I would like to thank our esteemed panel of judges who took out precious time from their schedule to be a part and just this event. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am for your valuable feedback. Next, I would like to thank my fellow teachers who made this event possible, tirelessly working behind the scenes to ensure that it turned out to be a successful event. I would like to thank Ms. Rosie Philippos, Ms. J. M. Gomes, and Ms. C. De Costa for their efforts that they put in. Lastly, but not the least, I would like to thank our editors who did a splendid job in putting together this wonderful presentation. I would like to thank Mr. Edmonds and Utkarsh Jaiswal. Thank you. Next, I would like to announce the prize winners. The first position, I would like to say, is tied. It's shared between Tiregish Pine and Rajdeep Chatterjee of class 9A. The second position goes to Nilabju Sengupta of class 9A and the third position is held by Anurag Murmu of 9A again. Thank you. God bless you all. Thank you.